more information about the great sector of biotechnology, uh, as well as training opportunities at Central Carolina that can qualify you for these great careers. Uh, I've got my colleague Greg Parr with me today, uh, and I also have a former student and a wonderful industry representative, uh, Dee West, who will share some information as well. Um, so at Central Carolina Community College, we have a biotechnology department. Um, and what that just means is biotechnology is a set of tools and technologies that we can use in order to make products aim to make our lives better. Um, and we do that through living cells. So for example, you may be familiar with medicine that's made, um, Securus and Holly Springs, where D works actually makes the flu vaccine. Um, if you get your flu vaccine from CVS or anywhere every year, you can actually look at the package and it will say CSL Securus on there. Um, so medicine is definitely a huge part of this industry. Um, you may also have family members who are diabetic and need insulin. Eli Lilly locally makes that product. Biotechnology also includes some really innovative and unique products. So for example, there's a company here in North Carolina that makes sustainable building materials to make bricks. And their company is called Biomason. And I just think that's one of the super cool, uh, unique companies that we have here in North Carolina. There are also biotech companies who make leather from mushrooms uh, and there's cultivated meat products as well. So while a lot of what we think about in North Carolina that is biotechnology um, or biopharmaceutical related is medicine, um, it is much broader than that. And the training programs that I'm gonna share with you today all will provide you foundational skills in order to qualify for positions in industry. So we always say that biotechnology is the tools and then bioprocessing just means the process of making whatever product that is. Um, just double checking, Corey, can you hear the binging in my background? Okay, perfect. Um, and so we really think about these career pathways as an intersection of manufacturing, science, technology, and engineering, and then also health sciences. And we say health sciences because these careers can really speak to the passion people have to help other people without working directly patient with patients in the healthcare industry. So a lot of people will want to join this industry because they like helping people. And you can do that through making life-saving medicine. Um, and this picture here is actually of students in our bio work class. So those are actual Central Carolina students. Um, and so I mentioned some of the different components or products that companies can make. Um, Pfizer and Amgen are also here locally um, within a commutable distance between Sanford and Holly Springs. We also have companies who are really on the cutting edge of precision medicine. And what that means is treatments are becoming more and more specific to the patient. And we're also approaching being able to provide treatments to people who have never had treatments before. Um, and these innovative therapies really live in the cell and gene therapy space. Um, you also have companies like Crygen Pharmaceuticals and others who make um, products that are injectables. And so while not a medicine itself, your saline bags are part of this um, industry as well that patients get when they may be in the hospital. And then you also have companies who are contract manufacturing companies like Fujifilm Diosynth, um, they're building out more capacity in Holly Springs, and they're also operational in Morrisville. And these contract manufacturing companies essentially are contracted to make products for other companies. And so if you're someone who likes to work on a wide variety of different projects, that could be a great avenue for you to explore. All right, so BioWork. BioWork is a 152-hour short certificate course. It is one course that provides you an entry-level credential in order to get a great job in this industry. Um, the process technician or manufacturing associate is the main title 
um, that you would be looking at with this particular credential. Um, and there's an increase of demand for people who need to make medicine. So when you think about companies who are announcing in this area, the bulk of those jobs are going to be at the process technician or manufacturing associate level. What we've really done in our training program is we've taken a regional approach to workforce development. And what that means for you all is that we're not just looking at jobs locally here in Sanford. We're looking at making matches for you with jobs who are within, you know, a 45, 50 minute commutable distance, um, which is what people may be comfortable with. So not only Sanford, but looking into Holly Springs and kind of the, the Durham RTP area as well. And I think that just makes this training program and the value of the training that you get just so much more um, transferable between different companies. So with the BioWorks certificate program um, at Central Carolina, we run our program hybrid. And so what that means is you will do certain content online asynchronously at your own pace to meet regular deadlines. And then you would come into our lab spaces either once per week if you're doing a 16 week class or twice per week if you're doing an eight week class for that critical hands-on learning. We do that because we know you all have uh, jobs and responsibilities outside of uh, learning new things and we wanna make sure that our training programs are accessible to you. Um, so when you're coming in for the hands-on, um, we'll make sure that you know how to work safely. So using personal protective equipment or PPE, you'll learn about good manufacturing practices. You'll do different um, practice problems and measurements. Uh, you'll also learn about controlling the process and aseptic technique, making sure that you're not contaminating anything. That's very important. All of these things that you're doing hands-on will then translate to specific experiences that you can put on your resume. So we are very intentional about how we built out the course for online learning and then bringing you in for that hands-on piece as well. And the class itself will include workshops and resumes, um, job search strategies, and also interviewing skills. Um, in a minute, I'll talk a little bit more about the associate's degree program. And the really cool, valuable thing about BioWork is you can take just one class, earn a credential that's meaningful to finding an excellent career. You can also roll BioWork into our associate's degree program, and you'll earn credit for two courses that equate eight credits into our associate's degree program. And I'll talk a little bit more about that here in a minute. I'm gonna hand it over to my colleague, Greg Parr, who is our pathway navigator at Central Carolina. And he'll talk a little bit more about his role in doing workshops. Great. Thank you very much, everyone. Um, pleasure to be here. I wanted to talk to you a little bit about my role at Central Carolina, uh, the biotechnology pathway navigator role. Basically, I have the opportunity to work on career development with our current BioWorks students, as well as the graduates of our program. And there are five key areas that I work on. Resume development, LinkedIn optimization, interview preparation, career fair readiness, and job search strategy. So I wanted to briefly just tell you a little bit about what each of those elements does for the uh, biowork graduate as they are starting their career in our industry. Uh, resume development starts out with really trying to make a biopharma resume. And it's a little bit different than a regular resume because it incorporates all the things that you learn in your biowork course. And we take that and your transferable skills and we come up with a resume that resonates with the hiring managers from the biotech companies. Uh, in interview preparation, we try to uh, get you to become a better storyteller so that you can describe the skills and knowledge and abilities that you bring to the table. So 
really from an interview preparation standpoint, it's all about confidence. And we wanna give you the skills that you will need to feel confident as you finish the course. We also talk about LinkedIn. It's a great marketing tool and a way for you to connect to people within the industry, whether that be recruiters, hiring managers, or fellow uh, employees at a future company. Career fairs are another way and another advantage that we offer within the BioWork course. We have career fairs in both the spring and fall, I'm spring, spring and fall, as well as occasionally in the summertime. But there's other career fairs that you might be able to go to. We have uh, some really good ones where we get a lot of different employers that you would be interested in seeing, and we work with you to prepare for those events. And then finally, job search strategy. It sort of brings everything together, and we want to make sure that you have a plan that you can work to get that first job. So let's talk a little bit more about the positions that you qualify for uh, coming out of BioWork. So here are some of the career or some of the titles that you would be familiar with if you were applying for jobs. Many companies have the position called manufacturing associate. Uh, also process technician is another one that's popular. These are entry level positions. And so as, as you've taken and graduated from the BioWork course, you've got a good foundation. Uh, most of these roles require only a high school diploma plus the short-term training uh, that you would get through BioWork. So these are great ones to start a career with. Next slide, please. And then finally, let's talk a little bit about what those great job opportunities look like. So you can expect starting salaries in the 18 to $24 an hour range, but there's a lot of factors that would increase that uh, amount based on uh, the location that you find yourself in, uh, if you have additional education, what your experience is, especially if you have manufacturing experience. So we do have graduates that start at higher hourly salaries than that. Um, but there's also opportunities to work directly for a company as well as a staffing agency. So there's a, a lot of different ways to start your biopharma career. These are some of the companies that you may be familiar with names like Eli Lilly, Pfizer, Merck, Amgen. And these are companies that have a strong presence in North Carolina, but they also have a national and, and in many in most cases, an international presence. So these are really great opportunities to have a career, not only in North Carolina, but in other locations. We certainly hope you'll stay in North Carolina because as Dr. Smelzer mentioned, North Carolina is really a very strong manufacturing hub. We have 108 manufacturing sites within the state. Uh, about 30,000 people work in manufacturing in biopharma. So uh, you'll see companies like Eli Lilly, who have invested billions of dollars since 2020, Fujifilm, Biosynth Biotechnologies, uh, who recently doubled the size of their manufacturing space and added 680 new employees, and Novo Nordisk and Clayton, who last month announced a $4.1 billion expansion with 1,000 new jobs in Clayton. So as you can see, there's a lot of opportunity being created. Um, and so um, at this time, I'll turn it back to Dr. Smelzer to talk a little bit more about uh, career pathways. Thank you, Greg. I appreciate that. I always love seeing the the different industry logos um, because I think that's visible and, and recognizable for people. So before we talk a little bit about what it's like to work at a biopharmaceutical company, I did want to make the connection that um, while we really focus on bringing people in for bio work as the first course, um, there are additional education steps that you can take after bio work. Majority of our students will take bio work um, and really focus on getting their career started and then come back and take their associate's degree part time. 
We also have students who work on their degree full time as well. Um, and we're excited to have the diversity in people in our classes. And I think that just makes our program stronger. Um, so with bio work, it can be completed in um, eight weeks to 16 weeks. And Greg mentioned that the process technician or manufacturing associate are the job titles that you'll be looking for. Um, one other thing that I think Greg does a great job of is he takes your prior experience and prior education with the addition of bio work and really looks to see if there's additional job titles that you may qualify for. So while you get the in-class workshops, you can also set up one-on-one -on -one appointments with Greg during your bio work class and also after. Um, and I will tell you, the students who make a plan and work with Greg regularly really have great success in finding that next role or first role after bio work. When we're thinking about classes after bio work, uh, we've got a bioprocess technology certificate. And with bio work, you are halfway to earning this next level certificate. It just takes two more courses, an introductory biology course and a bioprocess measurements course. If you're thinking about continuing your education after bio work, we do take transfer credit. Uh, we wanna make sure to give you as much credit for your prior work as we can. That can then roll into our Bioprocess Manufacturing Technology Associates degree. Um, completion time really is up to you and depending on how quickly um, or the particular course load that you wanna take to set you up for success. When you're joining our degree program, you'll be assigned to an advisor um, who is either myself or one of other, our other faculty members so that you get that detailed one-on-one -on -one attention to make a plan for success. Um, we can also transfer our program to a bachelor's degree. We wanna make sure that people have um, options as they move through. Uh, ECU's online bachelor's of industrial science is the most popular. Um, I always want to make sure that people understand, yes, bio work is a fantastic starting point and making sure that people are aware that you can continue going. As Greg mentioned, your job title and starting pay definitely can have education impacts. So the more education you have, the more doors are open for different roles and more doors are open for higher salary. When we're thinking about that associate's degree level, manufacturing associate and process technicians still apply. Each of these roles have different levels. And so as you're learning and growing in your career, um, you will may see different education requirements for different levels, and that can help you understand um, how you may be promoted within your, uh, your role. Quality assurance, quality control, um, documentation, inspection, and validation, um, these are all possibilities as well. Uh, and I do just want to reiterate the great job opportunities. Not only a great job, but it's a fantastic career. Um, sometimes people say that they're looking for a change because they want to make sure that they can continue to grow. And this is an excellent field for you to be able to continue to grow and to learn. Um, if you're looking at job opportunities with an associate's degree, um, you can expect an increase in the hourly rate. Um, but same companies, um, and we'll have a great opportunity to share some of our industry experts while you're in bio work class. Um, so our goal is to have two different companies visit your bio work class. Um, usually we do it for gowning. And so someone from industry will come in and um, be there with you for your gowning training, which I think is exciting. And then we usually have an industry group come in the last day of class to make sure that you've met a few industry contacts and be able to network with them.
Uh, so just to recap, um, Greg is a full-time member of our biotechnology department, um, and he is there to run in-class workshops for resumes, interview preparation, LinkedIn optimization, and to make sure you feel confident for career fairs. Um, you also have access to him uh, in a one-on-one -on -one appointment capacity as well. All of our adjunct faculty work in industry, and this is so important to me, and I am always so excited to say um, that our adjunct faculty work in industry. Um, so Kyrone and Evan both teach the BioWork course, um, and they've both worked as process technicians um, and have um, been promoted throughout their careers. If you continue in our degree program, uh, Kyrone teaches our validation fundamentals and Evan does downstream. Uh, and then Seneca Toms is one of our wonderful GMP and quality assurance instructors, and he works in industry as well. So you get lots of exposure to people who work in industry. And I think that just makes your experience with us so meaningful. All right, so I have Dee West with us here today. Dee is a BioWork graduate from Central Carolina Community College, uh, and she is also a recent uh, associate's degree graduate. And Dee was also our graduation speaker for the spring. Uh, we are super proud of her. Uh, Dee entered Securus as a manufacturing associate and was promoted uh, to being a lead as well. Um, and D, so some of the information that we have shares that if you're working in biopharma manufacturing, um, you're working with teams or with partners, um, can you tell us a little bit more about what it's like to work in biopharma manufacturing? Good evening, everybody. Well, um, bio, bio pharma manufacturing is a different kind of animal. It's not the normal nine to five job. Um, you are working shift work, which means you will be um, working a two, two, three shift. So that means that you would be and you're working 12 hours, you're not working eight hours. So um, that's the first thing that you want to understand is that it's not eight hours. But the thing I love about it is that you only work 15 days a month. So that's that's the that's the caveat to the 223. And you work every other weekend. So um, if that's something that catches your eye, then you're almost there. Um, the other thing you have to understand is that you're going to be working with different teams. You may not be on the same team. You might have different team members. Um, I work um, on B shift. So B shift is day shift. And then we have our night shift that follows B, uh, B shift. So it's B and D. And then on the other shift is A and C. So I only get to see my A team or my C team once a week because they work totally the opposite of what we do. Um, and I work in the packaging area where we package the syringes and send them out to um, the different distribution areas. But I've also uh, worked in the aseptic side, which is formulation and way and dispense, adjuvant. Um, so I'm pretty much a well-rounded, I'm cross-trained um, in both areas. So I'm, um, I'm there. But um, the best thing that I can tell you about working in biopharma is that if you really want to help someone um, and you're squeamish to trying to working actually with a physical person, like a nurse or something like that, then this is the best way to give back and make sure that you're making a product that you represent and your integrity is there. Um, the other thing that I want you to definitely understand is a lot of standard operating procedures when you first start. You will go through a rigorous two weeks of training. Well, I don't know every, every facility, but I know at my facility, everybody goes through two weeks of looking at SOPs and they do get tiring. Um, but once you get out on the floor, you'll get trained and you'll start seeing the different things. 
different machinery, different ways that you will be helping um, people with getting the medication that they need. There's a question in chat um, I've asked both Dr. Smelser and Deidre. Uh, mm -hmm. Typical, a, a more normal work schedule, eight to five. Are there opportunities like that, that in this industry or is it more 12 hour shifts? No, you have um, your QAs. There might be different shifts that way, but they also work 12 hours too. But their your validation team, they, mark, they may work Monday through Friday, eight to five, or they may work seven to 4.30. It depends on what your actual title will be. Um, the actual shop floor QA, which is the actual people that come out to the floor, they work 12 hours right along with us. But say, for instance, if you get into warehouse or something like that, they work Monday through Friday. And they, they have um, where they have an on-call team every weekend. So whoever's on call that weekend, they would have to come in and, you know, whatever we needed, they would bring that product, you know, if we needed components or anything like that, they would come in. But normally the administrative offices, they are closed on the holidays and they're off on the weekends. So, but our facility is 24 seven. So we have 12 hour shifts and um, we have our night shift and our day shift. So that's how they split it up. Perfect. I think that was a great overview, D, that applies to a lot of different larger companies. Mm -hmm. um, so it definitely depends. Um, I know Estella's Gene Therapies right now is a little bit smaller facility. They're currently mainly eight to five, one shift, but I know if they're manufacturing, then they deviate from mm -hmm. that. So yeah, I loved your explanation. That was fantastic. Um, you. Can you talk a little bit about the the PPE and then maybe from the PPE and kind of the gowning, maybe some of the pieces of equipment or kind of like what you do on a daily basis, a day in the life. Okay. So my day in my life starts at 530 in the morning. <laughs> and when I get to the facility, I have to go into the locker room and I change out um, because I'm in packaging. I don't have to put on scrubs or anything like that. But I do have to put on a frock. I have to put on safety glasses. I have to put on safety shoes. I have to put on a hairnet and we wear gloves. Um, and the we can keep our regular clothes on up under our frocks. But if you were going into the aseptic side, which is the clean side, you would definitely have to change out of your clothes and you would have to put on scrubs and you still have to put your safety glasses on. You still have to put your gloves on. You still have to put your hair net on. You just wouldn't have to put a frock on because when you go onto the clean side, you're going to walk right into the clean side um, and you go onto the floor. Well, when you come back off the floor, it's the same. It's a different process, but you come out and when you go to, if you have to go to the restroom if you have to go to lunch or whatever like that, you would undress, put your street clothes on and then go to the cafeteria, eat, and then the reverse would be done when you come back. Um, same way with me. Um, when we go out for breaks or lunches or anything like that, you have to take your frock off and you proceed to change your shoes and then you go to the restroom and then you go to the cafeteria. So um, with that being said, you do have a lot of time uh, as far as like I, I know people are like oh my god well how much time do I have for a break or how much you know for breakfast or or lunch so that you have a lot of time and it's built in to your time for you changing out and putting your safety shoes on and getting redressed so you know we have like a total of 70 minutes a day so that's enough time for us to do our breakfast, do our lunch. And then you still have that time if you have to go to the restroom or you want to go get a drink of water, because understand there are no water fountains out on the floor. You have to, everything is, um, everything is off the floor. You know, somebody had made a, we made a joke with me the other day. It was like, gee, it'd be so cool if we had water fountains on here, out here. I said, yeah, and then you would have bugs out here too, right? So um basically it's a clean space and um my area is like a zone um d and e area so that 
means that it's clean, but it's not clean. And on the clean side, you can't have anything like you can't have any cardboard or anything like that because of the, the cardboard spores and stuff like that. That creates um, that creates a spore and we don't need spores on the floor when we're making a product or if we if we're processing the product and then filling it because all of our stuff is the only thing that is not done in house is our fluid product is done in Liverpool and that gets brought in and gets transferred into a vessel. And that's how we fill it into our syringes when it goes into um, the filling machine. And then we have our filler, which fills the syringes and then they go into a tub and, I, and everything is um, sterile. So when it's filled, it comes out on the other side of it's a big wall and stuff like that. And the people put it on a pallet and they wrap it and then it goes into the cold storage and then it'll come back out and we have two inspection machines. So these inspection machines are specifically for our syringes. So what it's doing is it's inspecting every single syringe Um that it will check to see if there's any particulates, if there's any liquid in the rib, if there's a crack in the syringe, if the syringe is warped, any, any type of defect, that machine is going to kick it out. So once that process is done, then it goes on to another pallet and then it gets packed out and it goes into the packaging area. So we have our labelers, um, we have a cartner and then we have um, the back a bundler and then we have our case packer and the case packer is the coolest thing I love it to death I work with it all the time and um, but it, the great thing about it is you're watching this material you're watching all of this go through and at the end of the day when it goes into a finished case and goes on a pallet you know that you did your job and you did it well Awesome. I love that. I also just love to hear the excitement and the pride that you have for your for your role. That's absolutely wonderful. Um, before we move to the next slide, could you tell us a little bit about the training that happens either like when you're first hired and then throughout your time? So like I said before, um, in the beginning, you will have two weeks where you'll sit and look at a computer screen like this all day until you get out on the floor. And that's when you'll get introduced to your team and you'll have a, most of the time it's either myself, um, the other team lead, or I have um, seasoned team members. I know, you know, who, who can train who the best. And um, they will start training you on a piece of equipment or it may be a specific task. And as you catch on quicker daily, then I'll ask you to do different things and help with different things. Because um, in my area, we take care of everything. We take care of um, recyclables. We take care of um, making sure the truck gets loaded with all of our recyclable products because all of our um, tubs and nests and everything like that once we're finished with them, we used to just throw them away, but we have come up with a recyclable program now where we have saved about $1.6 million on going to landfill. So um, now we have a, a truck that comes in two to three times a week and we load that up. So you might ask, be asked to help with that. You'll learn how to do line clearance, line clearances where once we finish with the whole batch, we have to make sure we clear the line with the product we just finished running so that we can start a new product. But it's actually going to be the same product. It's just a different batch number. But we have to do this process to show that we cleared everything off the line from that previous batch. So like it's like pretty much if you were baking a cake and you have to bake more than one cake, you don't want to use the same dirty pan. You want to clean the pan and then use the pan again. 
So that's the basic, that's, that's an analogy just to say, okay, well, we got to have this clean so we can start all over again and create the same thing all over again. So that's an analogy I came up with and everybody gets it when I say it like that. They're like, well, you know, you don't want to use a dirty pan and make a new cake. So that's the best analogy I could give on how to do a line clearance. That's, that, that's the quickest way just to break it down like that. Um, and once that it's just, the training is rigorous. Um, you might get frustrated sometimes because you might not be able to do certain things right away because, um, sometimes we have our associates there, everybody calls out. So, you know, everybody has different issues going on. So it might be a day where you might not have any training, but you will have your training on the computer. Because when you come on the floor, you're still going to have some training that you have to do like your success factors. Trust me, I have success factors every day. Half the time I don't get to look at them. And then I get a look from my supervisor like, Deidre, did you forget something today? I'm like, oh, yeah. OK, I'm sorry. My bad. And so just understand that when things happen like that, it's not that we don't want to train you and don't want you to learn. It's just that when we have those situations, we have to pivot. And I'm always pivoting because sometimes um, an operator, two operators will be out and they're, one may be on the back end and signed off and another one may be at the labeler. And I have to pivot with, okay, who can do what? Well, I can kick in. I have to work too. So just understand when you're coming to the floor and things are a little hectic, you're going to get your training. I promise you, you'll get your training. If if I, if you don't get your training, then I'll get in trouble. So I'm going to make sure you get your training. <laughs> I love that D. And uh, what I think I also hear you saying that may be different from other jobs is, you know, the education that you receive provides a foundation, but then because of the regulations of the biopharma industry, you have to be signed off for every single thing that you're going to be asked to do. Exactly, because if you do, you are not signed off and the FDA comes in and they're doing their audit and they see that there may have been a discrepancy or an issue with, say, we get a recall on the flu vaccine. Well, they're going to do an investigation and they're going to go back and see, okay, well, who signed this BPR? Oh, Deidre West signed this BPR. Let's go into her training and see if she was trained on all of this stuff. And if they find out that I wasn't trained or even signed off on that, it's going to be a penalty and a fine to my company. And also I will be asked why wasn't I signed off at the time when I signed that BPR. Because people fail to realize that this, those BPRs that we sign off and put our initials and date and everything in, they are legal documents. They can be held up in court. So if there was ever a time that we were asked to come in for an affidavit or court wise, you would have to be held accountable for that. So that's the other thing you want to understand when you're signing something, you have to make sure that if it says there's a column that says performed by and there's a verified by verified by i have to physically see you do that when you when you perform i'm standing there with you the sign behind you now if it's a ver a reviewer it's a performer and a reviewer then i don't have to really be there but verified by is very critical in our field. If it if it says verified by, best to believe I'm going to be standing there watching you to make sure you performed it because I'm not putting my initials and date on there or my signature if I did not see you do it. So the main thing that I would like to say to anybody is make sure that you have integrity and that you are honest and that you are um, very digital, you're detail oriented and you're diligent. And if you do not feel comfortable with signing something, say that. Don't just sign it. Because I have challenged managers and supervisors. 
and they'll look at me funny and they're like you're not gonna say no I didn't see you do that oh well, I'll get somebody else okay and it's, quick okay question. To, it's okay to say that <laughs> yeah that's important cool what do you got Corey yeah I from uh, uh, someone in the chat asked about trying to find a job at, at a facility is it better to ask for help from someone at the facility uh uh, to recommend you for a hire or maybe the job uh, approach. And I don't know if Greg wants to pop in or Dr. Smelser to answer that question as well. Uh, we go ahead, Greg. I was just going to say referrals are always a great way to make a connection. Um, it's something that different companies have different methods that they do. There could be a formal process where there's a bonus paid to employees uh, that do a referral. But uh, if you if you don't think you know somebody at a biopharma manufacturing facility, you probably know someone who knows someone. Um, you'll be amazed at how many family members, somebody you know from church. So uh, look for those opportunities because that just puts you in a different category when you're applying for a position. Yeah, Dee, anything to add on that? Um, I would say just research the company because I didn't know that um when I first was re was hired I didn't know at first it was temporary mm -hmm. it was a contractor's position so understand when you do get hired make sure you understand that it's a contracted position or it's a permanent position um, I know with my company, that's how we hire our folks. We, I started out as a contractor and I became permanent. That's how they do everybody. Everybody that's ever, ever worked at Secures, um, either they got grandfathered in from when it was Nova Nordis and they rolled over into Secures, but every, every, all the ones that I know of, um, the only thing I want think, I think Pfizer, they will hire right out. Um, but I do know Securus does, they go through contracting. They contract first before they say, okay, yeah, we want you, you know, to hire you. Or you may be lucky and get in and you can get in on permanent. But just understand you want to make sure that when you're talking to these, you're making these contacts and you're talking to people because I get e I get emails all the time talking about, oh, I got a position for you. And then I look down and it'll say, um, and say, well, it's only for 12 months. Nope, can't do that. <laughs> so make sure when you're looking, read the fine print because some places will sometimes not give you all the information until you already in, you're already in the door and then you're like, oh, well, I didn't know this was contracted. And then, you know, you might not want to stay. Yeah, so it sounds like uh, contract roles can be very common in industry. Uh, mm -hmm. And just making sure that you understand all the parameters as you're applying for a job. Um, so when you think about like benefits of working at a biotechnology company, you know, some of these are very standard. I know tuition reimbursement to complete your degree can be something um, that's very valuable. Is there anything else that you wanted to touch on that's a benefit that you think is important? Um, your your, uh, you get a bonus. Um, every year we get a bonus. Um, it depends on your rating. They do a rating, um, with you. It's called cal. They the the managers and supervisors they go into a calibration, and basically they pick who was a four, who was a three, who's a two. So depending on your level, that's that's what your bonus would be. Um, also with, um, the clean work environment, definitely very clean. You won't, you won't walk into any bio pharma facility and it's nasty. If it is walk, turn around and walk back out because that's not how it's supposed to look. <laughs> um, also, you know, you get paid vacations, uh, the holiday pay, also, um, PTO time, we get, um, we get mental health days, you know, so there, everybody has different things. We also have like where we have, um, we get paid to go to the gym. It's like, if you want, you're, you know, trying to lose weight or whatever, we have a wellness team now where 
you know, every day you get certain points for um, eating healthy and you get your name gets thrown into the a drawing to right, get a raffle or something. And we have it's a lot of different things that different companies do. They, you know, our team after we finish for the season, like after the Northern Hemisphere season, we have a big celebration um, where they appreciate us or um, they every year for the past three years now. They shut down. Um, they they bought out Dave and Buster's from like eight in the evening until ten o'clock at night, and everything is on them. So you know, it's it, it all depends on the company and and you know it. But just do your research. Just when you're in, when you're starting and you're ready to look for a job, do your research. Check it out if you know somebody that knows somebody heck I'm on LinkedIn if you want to ask me some questions you can ask me some questions because I have a bunch of friends that work at Pfizer I have people that work at Amgen I have people that work at KVI Biogen you know so it's the the it an unanswered question is is you know you you can get the answer if you really want if you really want to work at that company you can get the answers you need Awesome. Thank you so much. And then um, if you're working third shift, um, usually you get a little bit of a pay differential. Yes, you, so get a, you get a differential. One. Yeah. Yes. And I did not, well, I guess I did give you this list ahead of time, but I love to hear that, you know, your number one thing was integrity, teamwork. Um, you talked about SOPs a little bit. Um, do you want to elaborate on kind of qualities that are needed to succeed in this industry or add to this list? So I already said integrity. You have SOPs, which is your standard operating procedures. Then GMP. GMP is good manufacturing practices. Good manufacturing practices is pretty much documentation, um, putting the correct uh, data in the areas that you need to, making sure your calculations are correct, um, making sure you're putting the correct date making sure the person that is signing behind you is right in the right date. Um, <laughs> um, teamwork, understand that there's no I in team. So you're going to have a teammate and you're going to have to get along with them or, you know, get in a, a rapport with, with, you know, your team, your team lead, your supervisor, your manager, and even, even your, um, your supporting team, meaning the warehouse, meaning the uh, shop floor QA. You don't want to piss off shop floor QA because they won't sign off for anything for you. They won't help you with nothing if you don't you don't treat them right. Um, the warehouse team, you want to make sure you can, you know you're cool with them because they're the ones that's bringing your components in and they're coming to pick up your um finished product and you know just bringing stuff back and forth for you so you want to make sure that even though you have um your teammates specifically you want to make sure that you're able to still have a good relationship and good rapport with all the outside teammates as well I call them my internal teammates and then also your um manager and supervisor have good communication with them if you feel something wasn't right um, also definitely a desire to learn, you know, the more you, the more you learn, the better your understanding of your job, the better you'll be at your job and the better you'll be able to experience, you know, getting promoted and going different places. Like, you know, the sky's the limit and definitely good communication, be able to communicate well, um, make sure that if there, it was an error, own it. Don't say, oh, I don't know what happened. Don't don't do that because if you do that, then that causes a distrust between you and your supervisor, you and your teammate, because then your teammate won't trust you anymore. So you definitely want to make sure if you see something, say something. Um, our motto is uh, at work is I am my brother's keeper. And that's all I got. <laughs> That's a good one, Dee. Thank you. Um, maybe you can um, talk about the question in the chat, because I know you and I have talked a little bit about this. Um, is it common to transfer from one pharmaceutical company to another? 
um as far yeah there there are people that like to um try to get more money and but sometimes all money all good money is all money is not good money because sometimes you'll leave from a facility that you didn't have to do a whole lot and then you go to another facility where you're gonna have to bust your tail to get that extra money so you you might want to you got to use your pros and your cons yeah you know see with me um I probably won't be going anywhere because I like the downtime. Like we work six months out of the year and the rest of the time is training and projects and different things like that. So come October, I'll be relaxing. And whereas everybody else be sitting there sweating, trying to get, getting the medicines out and things of that nature. Cause our season is from um, May until October, mm -hmm. but this year was supposed to be finished by August. So fingers crossed. <laughs> gotcha. I think that's a good point that um, each company may have a slightly different cadence. Um, and while people do transfer to company to company, I always tell people while it's a very large industry, it's also a very close knit industry mm -hmm. and everyone knows one another. Um, oh, yeah. so treating people with kindness um, and being a good colleague will go a long ways to make sure doors are open um, at other companies should you decide to change. Definitely be care be careful with what you say because it will come back. If you say anything, it will come back. Yes. Well, Dee, thank you so much for being with us um, this evening. I really appreciate the insight that you're able to add. Um, everyone heard if you've got LinkedIn, um, please connect with Dee. She is a fantastic ambassador, uh, and I'm really excited to see all the good things that she does in the future. Um, and what I really love is this connection to helping your local community by making life-saving medicine, especially if you work at a place like Securus, you are making a medication that you and your family are getting from your pharmacy, and it will say Holly Springs um, right on it. So I think that is a really exciting takeaway. Um, as we're kind of wrapping up here, um, in order to register for BioWork at Central Carolina Community College, um, we currently do this either in person or by phone. Um, I have the two phone numbers up there in the middle, um, should you like to register, and we hope to see you in one of our classes soon. Um, I am also putting in the chat, there's an online orientation. It just gives you a little bit more insight on this career. You can also select Central Carolina as your preferred college. Um, I see some familiar names on here today, so I know some of you have already done this. Um, and that uh, your email address will go right to my inbox and I'll make sure to follow up with you. Um, but I do want to hand it over back if there's additional uh, information from uh, Tiffany or anyone else, um, I will hand it over to you. I don't, I don't know if Tiffany's able to jump on uh, from Capital Area, this uh, NC Works and just talk about if there's any resources people wanna use. Yep. Uh, one thing about the, um, the BioWork course, it does cost money. What is the actual cost, Lisa? Yeah, so the tuition is $182 and the book is $100. We do have scholarship opportunities, um, for example, State Employees Credit Union and other continuing education um, options. We do have um, scholarships that you would apply to through us, but the North Carolina Biotech Center, for example, um, is a sponsor as well. So we do have uh, some options for people to get scholarship um, support. So so those that are looking to take the course, you can go directly through Central Carolina uh, and possibly seek a scholarship uh, if you do not want to pay out of pocket, but also NC Works as part of our Capital Area Workforce Development um, Centers have opportunities to pay for this course as well. Um, I don't know if Tiffany can hear me if she wanted to pop on and just share anything about that, or um, if not, we can just leave it at that. But uh, I think many people on the call actually are already registered for NC Works. If you are, you can go to one of your local centers and talk to a, a representative about trying to uh, take this course and they can work with you to try to get you a scholarship to take it. Um, the, uh, you, Lisa, do you want to talk about upcoming classes, like you know, deadlines and all that, just as we're getting close to the end? 
Yeah, absolutely. So registration is open for our fall classes currently. Uh, we have two classes that we run in Sanford, um, Monday morning lab and a Thursday evening lab. And those start in August. Um, I would say both of the, the evening one fills up very quickly in Sanford. Um, so if you're interested in that option, you definitely need to um, call tomorrow. Well, actually, tomorrow's Friday. Our college is closed on Friday, um, but call on Monday. Uh, but we've got lots of different options as well. Um, we do a staggered start um, to make sure that everyone has an opportunity to take the class. In September, we have a Tuesday, Thursday afternoon lab that will be in Pittsburgh. And then in October, we have another evening opportunity that is Monday, Wednesday evening starting at 6.30 and that one is in Lillington. So both in the fall and the spring, we run that same schedule, four opportunities in the fall, four opportunities in the spring. Um, and then in the summertime, we usually drop down to two, but they're the both the evening classes um, since that seems to be most popular. Oh, Tiffany's trying to get on. You know, okay. <laughs> you good there, Tiffany? Yeah, can you hear me, Corey? Yes, yes. Okay, hey guys, my name's Tiffany. I'm over at the NC Works Career Center down in Lee in Tata County. Um, we also have career centers in every county. So um, Tatum's my, I come once a week. <laughs> but um, Lee County, you can find me down in Stanford, right by the CVS and the auto body shop. Um, it used to be the old unemployment office. <laughs> it is not unemployment anymore, but we are a career center. Um, we do have some great programs called WIOA, Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act, um, which is a federally funded eligibility-based program. So similar to applying to social services type programs, we get certain eligibility documentation such as birth certificate, social security card, driver's license, income documentation, um, unemployment information if you are unemployed. Um, and then, of course, highest education level. And if you're a vet, we get documentation. You know, so there's a variety of different documentation we have to gather to get you into the program so we can make sure you're eligible. Um, and then, of course, we do have to do assessments to make sure that you're right fit for us to put into a training program um, because our performance really is just to, it geared with what your goals and the objectives are, which is to complete the training successfully and to go into employment. Um, so there is a process that is involved with all of it. And the biggest part of it is it really just takes about 30 days after we get our scholarship application in. Um, and I'll walk you right through to getting the scholarship application submitted. Um, I could probably do it all within like a week and a half, you know, and, and get that all done with you if you bear with me and you have your documents. And then, of course, once we get it submitted, it's just a matter of waiting for a little bit of time usually about 30 days so that our supervisor can review everything, make sure that everything is quality controlled and, uh, and that it's all approved. And then you'll get this fun little email that says you're approved, confetti popping and, you know, approval letter on it. And I, I tell so I'm like, you got to, you got to see the confetti. <laughs> you know, like, but um, once you do, it's, it's an awesome thing because it only takes me a few days to get everything paid for. So you can go to school um, so I can help with tuition, books, fees, uniforms, supplies, you know, all the fun stuff you need to get yourself through school. We don't do a living expense or a stipend, unfortunately, um, but it definitely can help with all those costs so that you don't have to out of pocket all of that um, if you're not eligible for any kind of scholarship through the school. So it's just another great resource to help you to get into this wonderful program and to be able to complete it. And then, of course, you have me as your wonderful resource, too, as well as, as Corey and Lisa and all the fun folks there in their program. So, you know, you can just kind of bear with me and say, hey, you know, like, walk me through it and we'll get it done and, and get it in and, and get you so you can get all the way through. And then once you're done, we can get copies of your certificate and get a nice picture of you with it and, you know, show other people what it's all about so that they can get the same thing, you know, later in the future. Um, and of course, we're going to make sure you get employed and stay employed afterwards. So our performance is really geared towards the employment piece as well. So we want you to be employed. <laughs> so as much as you want to be employed. 
Um, but uh, reach out to me. I'm down at the Career Center. My name is Tiffany, and um, just say hey. And you can always get registered on our system from home. You don't have to come in um, if you don't want to because everything as far as jobs that we have in our system and registering is totally able to do at home, mcworks.gov. And it only takes 15, 20 minutes. I promise you the username and password is the hardest part of it all. So just <laughs> give me a call if you get stuck. Um, but thank you. Tiffany, I really appreciate that. Well, we'll we're gonna we're recording this and we're also gonna send out a follow-up email to everyone who registered. So we'll have Dr. Smelzer's contact information and also your contact information and uh, Deirdre, we'll, we'll we'll have if you want, we want us to, we can share yours as well. Uh, we'll if those want to reach out, but um if there's any other questions, we let you. This is the last last to ask. If not, I just want to say thank everyone for being on the call, and thank our our team at Central Carolina Community College and Deirdre and Tiffany and and everyone who came on tonight. You guys have a great rest of your Thursday. It was a pleasure. Thanks all. Thanks everyone.